everyone and welcome to the learning letter today i'm going to be sharing with you what we are doing for our maths curriculum and how we're using it so this is my new series i've already done reading um and, and now we're doing math today so in regards to a math curriculum i really wanted something that was going to be very interactive with hands-on activities for my daughter i didn't want a workbook style um it's just not she's just not a huge fan of that at all so when I was looking for various different curriculum, that was in the forefront of my mind. Now, when I found Saxon Maths, I couldn't really find many videos online about it. So it was, it, it brought on a, oh, I really hope this is going to be okay, but I can't really compare. Um, but it's absolutely worked out perfectly. So when I purchased it, I also got the big box manipulatives as part of the package as well. Do you like your maths program? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> and... Um, I'll, I did an unboxing of that and I'll link that video if you want to see exactly what was in the box. But we are thoroughly enjoying our Saxon Maths uh, Kindergarten. We are flying through it because we did a portion of Kindergarten Maths in Pre-K 4. So we are flying through it but that's fine. I already have the Grade 1 to move on to for when we finish them. I didn't want to skip it because the way it teaches is what I think the most fundamental reason that I love it is it's all using real life experiences so for example when you're doing addition uh, at the beginning the beginning of addition you're using bears to tell stories with so three bears got on the bus one got off things like that it's, it's making it very real life when you're measuring you're measuring with water and using jugs and everything else or doing um, so many different exercises that just make sense in terms of you can see where the steps are building up to them continuing on with their math career if you like i just think it's an absolutely fantastic program however i did decide to add something to it and partly that what the reason for that was because um, i wanted something center driven so um, we take a specific unit and we continue with it till the end and all the centers are linked to that unit so she can build on that foundation keep practicing but all the, the exercises are different but the same theme if you're an army so she's not bored with them but um it's challenging her and also reinforcing what she's already learning and it's fun and that was the main key point it's fun so I did purchase another curriculum because of that and the other reason was as well I have the um, classical style in mind when I'm planning my homeschool and um, in Susan Weisbauer's book she does mention that she thinks that something should be added to Saxon Maths and she just gives suggestions however I found a product on Teachers Pay Teachers which I absolutely love it is the Moffat Girls hands-on math made fun kindergarten curriculum and it has a, a ton of centres there's usually between 20 to, to 30 depending on what level you are centres um, with regards to each unit it covers things with 11 to 20, numbers 1 to 100, and then there's things like addition, subtraction, time, money, measurement. There's so many different units. I think there was 11 in total. Um, we're, on, we're just finishing unit 4, moving on to unit 5. And as well as the centre, she includes a whole bunch of worksheets that you can do. They're very interactive. We don't tend to do many of the worksheets because we're not in a, a school setting because she did write it, I think, with a uh, school in mind. Um, but, you know, homeschools are absolutely fine to use it as well and it's very relevant to us too. And it's all standards based. So the kindergarten standards are at the forefront when she was developing her programme. She And she does link. She'll say, you know, which worksheet goes with which standard, which centre goes with which standard. So if you are a teacher um, and you need to purchase this program it is fantastic for you uh, I would imagine having to show evidence for your standards so we don't do a ton of the worksheets we do do some of them but we do every single one of the centers and my daughter absolutely loves them so I'm going to show you a week supply of the centers and the worksheets if you were to do them for the kindergarten math made fun curriculum and I'll also give you a quick look inside the Saxon maths um, book so you can see kind of what it's like in there but we absolutely love our maths program. In addition to that, obviously we do maths games and I did a big Amazon haul. I'll link that video as well below if you want to check it out when I was setting up my homeschool of some maths games that we purchased. And then I'll, and you can use maths in everyday life when you're cooking, you know, when measuring out and everything else. And I just really want at this stage maths to be fun in kindergarten, but obviously that she's still learning as well. And then as we go up grade by grade, obviously it's going to get harder, but I'm hoping this foundation will give her the confidence and the reassurance that she can do maths, it's fun, and well, then we'll just build up from there. Okay, so with all these things that I'm showing you, all the different materials and everything, resources that we use for our subjects, please bear in mind that it's not the only thing we use. We do have additional things, additional games, different additional activities and everything else, additional activities and everything else that we use. 
but this is the sort of the main curriculum so I'm not showing you everything but just the main things so this is Saxon Math Co and as you can see it is incremental but I really do like that um, I will link the link below where I did an unboxing and showed you all the different manipulatives and activities that came with it resources that came with it um, it was very very extensive and I thought it was a great package so I will definitely link that below but this is a quick look at the table of contents so you can see an idea of what it covers now it is uh, it does go by months but because we are ahead we are actually um not following that process but it, you know it, it doesn't really matter to be honest um in terms of if you're doing march's lessons in january i don't think it really matters to us but we are up to um lesson 81 so we've got three lessons two of march left and then we're on to april and then may june and then we'll be starting our first grade book so it covers a wide range of sub of it covers a wide range of skills um but what i really like is for example here acting out some more some some more and some went away stories so what you do with this for example is you have the little bears and you have a little pretend pattern blocks which are their chairs and then you talk about different scenarios the one we're doing this week is about the cinema so the little bears are at the cinema sitting in their seats some go to get popcorn some go to the toilet some come back and it's all about practicing all the different addition and subtraction skills but in a fun and interesting way rather than giving a worksheet and you know just sitting there doing sums so I really really appreciate that um, we've got some tangram here um, we have got money and with the with the money it's another really fun way you put um, prices on food items and then you do a little supermarket set up and you give your child some coins and they count out the right coins for the particular item it's just so much fun rather than just doing worksheets which i really really love and this is why i was so happy when i found this curriculum and why we have continued with it and are continuing with, with it for next year so there is an, a separate a second book to this which is the meeting book and that's where you have your calendar in there and then they also do activities so i'll just show you some of the activities that you would do with your meeting book so let's just get up to where we, we're here so it, um the, you would look at the month and everything else obviously if you're not in march then you'll just do whatever month you're in and you talk about the day of the week how you spell it everything else you do your patterning for the calendar so for this one it is a green white orange pattern so it's an abc pattern you talk about how long you've been using the book for and then you count how many days you've used it for and then you do one of these estimation and counting activities once a week so you put 100 items in a clear jar or less than 100 items to change it out every time There's, they list some things that you can put in and then the child estimates how many they're in there and then we count by tens to see how many are in there you just do that once per week and then you also put your clock at what time it is when you're doing your lesson so it gives you some things that you can say it's, it's scripted so you could follow it word for word i don't do that i just read the lesson ahead of time and you know decide how i'm going to present it but it gives so many fantastic ideas i absolutely love sex and maths cannot recommend it enough and as i said check out the link below for the video where i do the unboxing you can see all the items that came with it okay now i mentioned we also do the kindergarten math made fun units from the Moffat girls this is a teacher on teachers pay teachers and i mentioned that we do this sheet it all it is all standard based so for example here's all the centers and the standards that it meets in terms of your kindergarten standards and here are some uh, examples of the centers now we are just finishing our unit four moving on to unit five which is addition so i'll just give you a quick look through some of the activities it's all very hands-on and fun you could use your own blocks you don't have to use <clears throat> excuse me the ones they provide um but she puts them in as extras but you can use your own counters and everything else this is a spin add and cover count and add roll add and cover flip and cover fill your board circle the sums bubble gum sums let's make 10 Counting clip to ten, addition number bonds, addition puzzles, 
fill it, spill it, add it. Feed me, we really like these. That's an example of the feed me ones that we're doing. This is not addition, this was our previous unit. Which, um, we are just finishing up, but this is how I set it all up so she can feed the um, whatever animal it is. Uh, addition facts, addition popsicles, story problems. So those are all the centers that come with that specific unit. And in total, there are 11 units, as I mentioned. I'm just gonna tell you what they are. So it's numbers one to 10 is unit one. I don't know if you can see this one. Unit two is 11 to 20. Unit 3 is counting to 100, Unit 4 is comparing numbers, 1 to 10. Unit 5 is addition to 10, Unit 6 subtractions to 10, Unit number 7 is base 10 numbers, 11 to 19. Unit number 8 is measurement and data, Unit 9 is geometry shapes, Unit 10 is timing, Unit 11 is money. Now where it comes to the money, um, I'll just use her activities but substitute it with our coins. So it, it works absolutely fine, it doesn't matter that... Um, American coins used I can just use our coins but use the same activities it also comes with a pile of worksheets for each unit now what I do with these worksheets again they are all to kindergarten standards as well they're all in here what I do with these worksheets is I don't use them as part of our maths time so we do our Saxon maths uh, lesson then we do our center and I don't use the worksheets there but what I'll do is I'll select out some worksheets from this pack that I think uh, my daughter will like and which will help with other skills and then I'll fit, fill them, fit them into various different subjects. So for example, when we're doing our fine motor work, if there's a cutting one where you're cutting out things and gluing and sticking, I'll stick, it in, I'll stick that worksheet in there in that kind of uh, topic. If we're doing handwriting and there's, there's number ones um, where she's practicing number formation or something along those lines, then I'll, I'll pop one of those sheets in there. So I find a way to put the sheets in to different aspects of what we're doing in our day just so that she's not sat down with it on a, at a desk with a pen you know doing a worksheet all the time it's not she's very active she doesn't like to um that's not her me method of learning but i do um find a way to, to incorporate some of the some of these uh worksheets and to, but still make it fun so i'll just show you a few of them okay so we've got our addition to turn again she's giving you all the standards of what you're achieving which is great if you're in a setting of a school, but it's also great for homeschoolers too. There's a few pages of those. I'm just gonna skip through. So right, so here we go. So these are some of the worksheets that come with it. So there's coloring ones, cutting out. So is the answer true or false? Again, cutting, well, and you can use those as counters. If you obviously, if you didn't have counters or something, you could use those. Addition to 10. So it's just a wide range of different presentations of the sum, just to keep it really fun and interactive. I've seen that she prints hers off on coloured paper, but for me that's really expensive, but it's a great way to do it, if you can. And this is a draw and solve, so draw the correct number of spots, so if your child likes drawing, it's a useful one for you. And there's so many different ones in here. So I'll just pick out ones that I think will incorporate well into different aspects of our activities. So this one is a cut and paste. And that's how I use the worksheets. I don't use all of them because there are a ton. Um, which is great if you're in a classroom setting. But as I said, we're homeschool. So I don't use all of them. But I do select ones that I think my daughter will like. Now the final thing we use for our maths for the main maths, as I said, we do do extra activities, but for our main uh, maths curriculum, the next thing we use is the interactive maths notebook, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so here's a little notebook that we put together. My daughter's a fan of Stitch, so we've <laughs> got different Stitch pictures on there. And this is the Carson DeLosa interactive notebooks for maths. Now, we do also have one for, for our science, and we also do it for language arts as well. Now, with this, you do have to photocopy it, but it's great. You can do that, which is obviously fine. And um, you ha if you have multiple children, it's great for that purpose too. So on this side, it'll tell you what your activity is, and then you'll photocopy the work pages. The reason you have to photocopy is because it's on the other, the instructions on the other side. Photocopy the pages, and then what we do is we do a page a week. But it tells you how to set up uh, your interactive notebook, the reason why notebooking is a really great way for children to learn and then at the back it also has so it's a, there's a wide range of activities in here and also at the back it has some extra 
uh, shapes and things if you want to do different size pockets. So pockets and cards, six flaps, shutter fold. So it gives you some extra ways to present the information if you want to do it a bit more fancy. But we're kindergarten right now, so we just do the basic way. But um, I think that's a great idea if you, the, your child or your classroom is a little bit older, then they can really make it fancy. But it is such a fun way to do it and we really enjoy doing our interactive notebook. This is our centre where we keep our maths and our literacy activities. So what I'll do is when we've used a specific piece of equipment, they, they say to put it into your centre or something along those, along those lines so they can continually practice with them, but keep the rest of them away until you use them just to make it more fun so that when you present the equipment to them, it's like, wow, this is really exciting. You get the idea. So for example, we've got our geo board up here. We've used those. We've got our counting blocks down there. We've got our pattern blocks. So these are some of the, we've got our clocks. These are some of the equipment that we've already used. So I put them into our centre and then the rest of them are stored away in our cupboard for when we get to that point in the book. And then in our storage cupboard we've got a range of different, so that there's the actual box that came with the curriculum which you will see if you watch the video below with all the different activities. But we've got a range of different um, games and resources that we can use, I just keep them all in our store cupboard. So that's everything we are doing for our maths, I hope that was helpful for you. Take care and I'll see you soon. The next one will either be science, how we do our signs or how we do our handwriting. Take care, see you soon, bye for now.